In this video, I'll be sharing an awesome quick tip you can find inside of the Unity C Sharp Survival Guide. You'll take a look at destroying objects in your video games and shattering the geometry. Coming up. I'm John with Game Dev HQ, and this channel is focused on training professional game developers. Whether you're a seasoned developer or just starting out, our community is dedicated to your success. We have videos coming out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comments below what you want to see next. In this quick tip, we're going to take a look at creating a destructible crate with an explosion. This quick tip can be applied to anything that you want to destroy in your games, such as broken glass, shattered jewelry, a shattered mirror. This concept applies to anything that can break in your game. Now, what is the concept of destructing or a destructible crate, for example? Well, the concept here is basically a smoke and mirrors effect. We have a solid cube here, and the idea here is that when it explodes, it needs to break into a million pieces. Well, in order for that to work, we need to work with physics and colliders so that we can create the explosion simulation. That's where the smoke and mirror effect comes in. In an actual video game, the way it works is your player is going to explode the solid crate, but what's actually going to happen here is we're going to hide the solid crate and we're going to enable a fractured crate. And you'll see here what this fractured crate looks like. If we enable all of the actual fractured elements, the fractured crate here is basically geometry that has all of the meshes broken out. So all we're doing here is we're hitting the solid crate or exploding the solid cr crate, we're destroying the hollow one, and we're replacing it with the fractured one. And that's going to allow us to actually simulate breaking this into a bunch of pieces. It's just a smoke and mirror effect. So check this out. Here's our solid crate with just one geometrical mesh, and here's our fractured crate. In order for us to simulate this experience of destroying it, if I just run the application now, nothing's going to happen. In order for these individual geome geometrical meshes to communicate with each other and interact and be affected by forces, we need to add physical properties to them. They need mesh colliders to wrap around their geometry, and then they also need a rigid body. So I'm going to select each individual fragment. I'm going to add a rigid body component, to give each individual fragment gravity, as well as the capability of physics. And then I'm also going to add a mesh collider, which is going to map to the geometry. In order for it to do that, it needs to be convex. And you'll see here that now we can see the geometrical mesh. So what we can do now is I'm going to turn off the solid crate. And you'll see here the fractured crate looks just like it. Now what happens when we run this? Because there's now physics and there's gravity, you're going to see here that a little bit of the box can now interact with each other and pieces of it are available to fly off. So what we can do now is through code we can create the smoke and mirror effect and explode the cube. To get started what we need to do is we're going to create a cube script behavior or a crate behavior. Let's create a new C -sharp script and let's call this crate. Let's select our solid crate, make sure it's enabled in the scene, and let's attach the crate script to it. I'm going to select the fractured crate and I'm going to hide this object as we don't want it to be active until we explode the crate. So on the solid crate, we have our crate script. Make sure you only have one. Let's open that in Visual Studio. And what I want to do here is when I hit the space key, I want to explode the crate. So let's create the user input. So here, we're going to check for user input. I get the key down, and we'll say keycode.space. So what happens when I hit the space key? Well, we need to basically create the smoke and mirror effect. In order for that to work, we need to remove this object and basically instantiate the fractured object. So I need a reference to the object that I want to instantiate, which is basically going to be public game object. We'll say fractured crate. Let's save this, hop back into Unity. Once it compiles, we can then add the fractured crate. So here the fractured crate is a prefab. I'm going to remove it from the actual scene here, and I'm going to drag it from the hierarchy, or the project view, I'm sorry. So here we have the fractured crate, 
placed in here. And what we can do now is create the smoke and mirrors effect. I need to destroy myself, basically. I need to say destroy this dot game object because we don't want the hollow game object there. But before we destroy this object, which is the hollow crate, we need to instantiate the fractured crate. So here we're going to say instantiate and we're going to say fractured crate. We're going to instantiate it at the exact position of this object. So we say transform.position and then we want the rotation to also just stay the same. No rotation. We're just going to ignore the rotation and we're going to use quaternion.identity to do that. So here, let's check out what happens when I hit the space key. Let Unity compile. Let's run the application. And you'll see here that as soon as I hit the space key, we basically destroy the cube and we created our fractured cube here. Now, unfortunately though, nothing happened. No gravity or anything like that occurred. So what I wanna do here is make sure that these cubes have their properties. And you'll see here that I accidentally deleted it without applying those changes. So once again, I'm going to bring the fractured crate back in here, select each object. We need to add physics properties to them. So each one's gonna have a rigid body. Each one's gonna have a mesh collider with a convex mesh. Okay, let's go ahead here and apply the prefab so that it saves. On the solid crate, we should be good. I'm going to save my scene, run the application again. And you'll see here when we hit the space key, we now created the effect. Now let's go ahead here and add in an explosion effect. From Filebase, I've downloaded an explosion effect, and I'm going to just drag it in here. What I want to do now is basically enable that effect when we destroy the crate. So to trigger it, I'm basically just going to instantiate the effect. So here I'm going to say public game object and we'll say explosion effect. And with the fractured item that we're instantiating, before we instantiate the fractured item, let's go ahead here and instantiate the explosion effect. So instantiate explosion effect at this position. And the rotation isn't important, so we're going to say quaternion.identity. Okay, so now that we have that, what we can do here is we have an explosion prefab here. And there's a few properties on here we need to change. Right now, this explosion is designed to basically loop. I want it to just play once. So what I need to do here is I need to bring it into the scene view. Let's bring it in. And I'm going to go into its properties here. And I'm just going to uncheck looping. So now that's the main fireball. And I'm going to go through each one and make sure that it's not looping. Once I do that, I'm then going to select the parent object and apply the prefab. That's going to allow this object to only explode once. And then I can remove it from the scene. On the solid crate, it's looking for the explosion object. I'm going to drag from the project view the explosion effect. Let's save this and test it out. So here, I'm going to hit the space key, and you'll see here that we got a nice explosion effect, but there was very little damage. Let's go ahead now and add physics forces through code. What we can do is because those objects have forces, I can iterate through each of the fragments and basically apply an individual force or a force to the whole of the crate. So to do that, what I can do is instantiate the fractured crate and I can get all of the actual rigid bodies from it and then we can act on them. So what I want to do here is I'm going to say here, we're going to instantiate this in a way that I have a reference to the fractured crate. So I'm going to say game object and here we're going to say, we'll say fractured object, right? This is what we're instantiating. So here we're going to say fractured um, crate, we'll say object, OBJ. And that's going to equal the instantiate method. Now, you no longer need to cast this as of 2018.2, but you used to have to use casting as game object. So you can still cast it, it just isn't required anymore. So here we have fractured crate object equals instantiate. The object that we instantiated is now stored as a reference into this fractured crate object variable. What I can then do is I can basically create a rigid body array 
And here I can basically say rigid body array. We're going to say all rigid bodies is going to equal the fractured the fractured uh, fractured create object. So here, fractured create object. And what we're going to do is get component and children. And I'm going to grab multiple components. So here we're going to use the plural, get components and children. And I'm going to grab the rigid body from all of the children elements. And it's going to be stored into this array. What I can then do is I'm going to check if we gathered any rigid bodies. So here I can say if all rigid bodies dot length, or actually I can just say if all rigid body is not equal to null. But another better check is actually going to be if dot length is greater than zero. That means we have rigid bodies. And what we can then do is I can iterate through them and add forces. So what I can do now is use a for each loop to iterate through each rigid body and add an individual force. So here we say for each, we'll say for each body in all rigid bodies, we're basically going to say body dot add explosion force. And you'll see here in the tooltip that we can add a float explosion force. So let's say, let's give it 500 newtons of force. The position is going to be at the position of this object, which is the crate, so transform out position, and the explosion radius. That's now going to affect other objects. So the radius of the sphere within which the explosion has its effect. So I'm going to go ahead and say here, let's set that to about 1. Let's save this. And let's check out how this reacts. We should get a pretty ballistic explosion here. I'm going to run the application. Let's hit the space key. And you'll see here that that crate literally got shattered to pieces. You can see here in the scene view, um, there are shattered pieces just everywhere. So that is how we create a destructible crate. The concept is just a smoke and mirror effect, and you can apply this to anything that's breakable in your projects. Thanks to all of our awesome Plus and Professional members. This content would not be made possible without your support. And special thanks to Lucky Ducky 10, OJ Zach, and Six. You're amazing. See you all next week.